Beers and Steinberg. You know what the f it is? Aries and Andy, you and the jerk. You know it's time to get this work. The real raw, gutter, uncut, cold. No political corrections. Always sleep. Being awoke. We discuss politics and jokes. Cry, we lick. There's levels to this sh before you were sucking on your mama's tit. Airy Spears don't give a fuck. We talk about race a lot, racism, sexism. Much love to my loyal bag holders, rollers, loaders. We got them in the folders. The whole world on our shoulders. Spears and Steinberg. Yeah. Don't worry. Be happy. Don't cost a thing. Everything going to be all right. Uh. So that's just a little hint of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, Andy and I have just seen the movie One Love, One Love, just get together and be all right. I was singing that the whole time headed to the movies. In the movie theater. In the movie theater, when I thought it was just going to be me, you, and four people. But uh, some people showed some up. Some people showed up. Uh, before we get to the main dish, and, and you know what? This Bar Marley thing is so great. I don't want to waste a whole lot of energy on doing appetizer talk as I want us to get to the main course. Uh, but I do want to uh, throw some appetizers out there uh, before we get into this. Uh, you ready? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so last week when we were coming back from uh, Buffalo, uh, I had a connection from Buffalo to Chicago, Chicago to L.A. I get on the plane and it's this big, tall dude. Uh, black guy. And I'm like, damn, his face looks familiar, but I couldn't quite place it. Uh, and he knew who I was. He was like, yo, what's up, Aries? I said, hey, man, how you doing? And he introduced himself. He said, Jason Collins. I went, that's right. Remember Jason Collins? Yeah. He was a big deal because he was the first, and certainly I, I'm sure there have been more uh, before him. He just was celebrated because he was the first openly admitted gay player in the NBA. Uh, and he played center. I forget, I forget for which team. I think it was New Jersey. No, no, that's the other Jason Collins that shot the motherfucker with the shotgun. But he, I forget what team he played for. But he came out openly gay. It was heavily celebrated. He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. And nice guy. We didn't really chat it up too much because uh, I was interested in eating my food. I brought on a plane and diving into my uh, Netflix series, which Annie and I are going to probably talk about next week, called Four Trials. So uh, nice guy. Uh, I'm cut to, we're in the air, I'm, I'm watching my, my documentary, and again, he and I, we chatted for a little bit. Um, Did he say steer? Nope. <laughs> uh, and the fact that he was the gay dude didn't even, I didn't, it was like, just a nice guy, forgot all about it. But I'm watching what I'm watching, and then he pulls out his laptop, and I look over, and he's watching RuPaul's Drag Queen, and I went, that's right. <laughs> brought it all home. <laughs> yeah. You put it all together at that moment? I, put it, I said, that's right. Yeah, this motherfucker is who we say he is. And the reason I said this, because it's the those... Francis. Yeah, um, there you go. Yeah. Um, and then once the plane landed uh, and I got up to leave, this dude on the other side of the plane, I'm on the far left at, at the window seat. He's on the far right at a window seat. This dude looks at me. He's got glasses on, and he's excitedly waving hello. And I kind of gave him the standard, oh, he's a fan. Hey, how you doing? But then I look back at him, and it caught me. I was like, yo, this nigga look familiar. I, it caught me. Dude, it was B.J. Armstrong of the Chicago Bulls. So I was like, oh, because we know. I'm a Jordan fan, Bulls fan, 90s, my era. So we both kind of merge as we get off the plane at the same time. I'm chopping it up with him. And I mean, this dude is smiling from temple to temple. And he's just like, dude, you don't understand. I love you. I'm a big fan. I, I respect what you comedians do. It's so courageous that you get up there and you do your thing. And he and I are talking all the way from the time we exit the plane till we both waiting at baggage claim. And, I'm a, and, I, and I told Andy this. Here's what fucks me up. Like... I know that the NBA is a land of giants, and I never met B.J. Armstrong in person, but I always felt like when you saw him on TV in comparison to the other guys. He's 5'5". Five five. He's 5'5". Five five. And I just knew in my mind he and I were the same height. That was 6'4". Right. No, and I was going to say this to you because that's why I would never recognize him. Right. Because 
on TV when you watch him play. Plus, he looked like he was 12 the whole time. Yes, he was in the and, 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 and that's the other thing. I said to him, dude, I didn't recognize you because I used to say comedically all the time, PJ looks 12 years old. It don't matter. He could be 85. He looks like a 12, an 85. He looks like Morgan Freeman. He's a, he's a 12-year-old, 85-year-old man. But he was gray, dude. He had a lot of grays up top, salt and pepper in the beard. So it threw me off. Um, but, yeah, th- to your point, yeah, he, he just, he's 6'4". It f***ed me up. Yeah, I would never recognize, like I said, I wouldn't, because I would look for a young guy that is 5'5". Five five because. Right. That's how uh, that's how big he appears when he's on the court right, with everybody. Right, like when when he's standing next to Jordan or Pippen, and they hug him, or he did a good play, and they high five him. It always looked like they were high fiving their little brother, and I'm going, damn, this nigga towers over me. It's amazing to me. So yeah. anyway, uh, he said uh, next time we perform, he's he, he's he's in. Uh, I think like the San Bernardino area. Okay. But he said next time we perform, he would love to come out to a show. So I chopped it up with him, uh, got his number, and uh, I'm going to be excited, man. BJ Armstrong. I, I'm, I'm excited just hearing the story. And I, f- I feel like we're slowly working our way up to the Messiah. We got Stacey King out of Schaumburg, Chicago. Now we got uh, BJ. I saw Dennis Robin in Chicago Airport. There's levels to this. We can skip Scotty. Uh I went straight to the Messiah. Yeah, you know what? I told you I met Scotty, and he was a nice guy, man. You know what, man? I don't know if y'all know. Speaking of pun on the word bull, there's a thing where him, uh, Scotty, Horace Grant, and Luke Longley are putting together a world tour. It's called the No Tour. And in the clip, Horace Grant goes, and when we do this tour, anybody that wants to ask us, we'll be answering questions about that bull documentary somebody wrote i saw that that podcast what if with cameron and uh uh mace and mace had the funniest jokes he was like what y'all is doing right now is just sad what does this say about y'all's journey that this is what y'all doing putting the tour together to shit on mike yeah but look at the look at the people that are on this horace grant who felt disrespected scotty who feels disrespected and Luke Longley, who Judd Bushler, and nothing against Judd. I know Judd from uh, U of A, mm-hmm. nicest guy in the world, but he was a volleyball player. He actually found a spot for himself in a right. championship team. Right. Uh, and, very, and a talented athlete. So I'm not, I'm not on him. Yeah. But he got more time on, that, uh, on the dock than, than, than Luke Longley did. Luke got none. And that's why I'm saying. Right. I love that funny story when Jordan goes, Luke's probably going to be mad at me for saying this, but we were playing whoever they were playing. And in the first quarter, Luke had 12 points, some amount of rebounds, and some amount of steals. I smacked him on the butt and said, Luke, that's how you play, man. Cut to, we were up 15. We lose by 15. And in the second half, Luke had same amount of points, same amount of rebounds, same amount of steals. And Jordan goes, Luke, I will never compliment you during the course of a game again. So that's probably why Luke is a little salty. You know, when he said, Luke said to him, don't worry about it, Mike. Don't worry about it to Jordan. Yeah. The ultimate I hate losing slash winner. That was his comeback. So, yeah. I I saw uh, Longley play in Phoenix after he left the Bulls. None of them did well except Steve Kerr. After the Bulls, no, Horace Steve. Grant played well. Uh, no, no, I know he he went on to Orlando. Orlando was, the yeah. but they never won anything. But he played well. I mean, I'm not saying yeah, he that played he, well. He, he played still had well. some Bulls residue in him. <laughs> he played well. Scotty, when Jordan was out, that I mean, besides the slip ups, he played well. He sh- they would have call away with Hubert Davis for making the finals. finals. But did they make it without the Messiah? No, they did not. Mm-hmm. And that team was still 95. percent Intact from the previous championship season. Listen, you know how I feel about Jordan. You know Jordan, how I feel about yes, Jordan. Yes, but Jordan didn't win without Scotty either. Boo! But yes, you're right. We know it, that. It's we know the truth. That. He, but who needed who more? Scotty needs Jordan. There you go. I mean, we don't know what Jordan would have done without without Scotty, but we know that Scotty came up. Yes, he was that close. Let's get off this before Brandon, Brandon bro- <laughs> blows his brains out um because we there's some other things i want to touch upon um but yeah uh w- w- i wanted to make one other point about uh that but f- 
We know what it is. So we're at the movies, right? And there's this uh, pre- can, can Steve play We're at the Movies song? We're at the movies. We're at the movies. Steve, throw that in there. We're <laughs> at the movies. Um, so, yeah, we're at the movies. And out comes this preview for this movie called Monkey Man. <laughs> produced by Jordan Peele. It starts with, it's a white monkey. It's a white monkey. It starts that way. It starts that way. Um, and I'm noticing, well, before I start saying I'm noticing... Boom, there's a couple Indians in the trailer. But then it's just really a lot of Indians. Then it's nothing but Indians. And this is like an action, like thriller movie. Like action, action, I almost say thriller. Kind of superhero, superhero-esque. All Bollywood. All Bollywood. Uh, and by the time the, the preview was over, it's silent enough, and I was timing it before the preview ended because the joke hit me halfway through. So it's quiet in the theater, and I go, it's basically Black Panther for Indians. <laughs> And Andy, there was one other guy that chuckled really good. But Andy, you you chuckled pretty good at it. I chuckled at two things. One, that you did it, number one. Because, <laughs> it, it, you know, it's funny. When you do something jokingly in a room that there's a lot of people, you might, you know, you don't need the whole room to get it because right. en- enough will get it and that will, like, cause it to, you know, continue to grow. Yeah. But there's nobody in this room. I mean, there is. There's probably, like, what, 15 people in this yeah, room? Yeah, total, yeah. And uh, that one guy to get it. Uh, was funny, and then I'm laughing because that guy's laughing, and you did it, and it was funny. Right. But then you just hear, just there's little, you don't hear laughter, you hear. <laughs> like he shouldn't have said, said that. that he, yeah, he, yeah. Um, and, you know, I was just, I, I couldn't help it in my mind. I'm going, finally they show the big preview, and of course, like any action f- movie, bah, 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 there's, a, there's a rhythm and a buildup, and then boom, title. Monkey Man. And I just, my inner poem when he was like, look at this sh- a movie called Monkey Man and not a sh- in the movie. The movie is called Monkey Man and it's Indians as the Monkey Man. Indians are almost like skin, white people hair, but it's called Monkey Man. Hollywood will not let be who are they are destined to be. A movie named Monkey Man with no if you would have done that, I think the move. The oh, button. that that would have been different. That that's a different energy. Um, but you saw who the producer was, dude. Let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> we ha- we have not talked about this, man. Since- if there's ever a time where you go, I, if if I could have a a mulligan, a, a something to go, if there's a moment in your life you wish you could take back, it's. Definitely that. That's the do-over. The big, in big theater-like letters, produced by Jordan Peele. Woo! That, there is no mistake. That is a major on my on my life. If he came to you, though, and said, Aries. Yes. I got this movie. Yes. I'm, I'll be monkey, man. You'll be monkey. <laughs> in the full monkey suit, nigga. Uh, last piece of business before we get to it. Uh, so our girl, Shamor. Remember what I said last week? Nick needed a song? Yeah. Uh, let me make sure I don't want to fuck this up. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I did the, when a man loves a woman, and then I ended it saying, there's something more appropriate. Our girl Shamor, badge holder, main madam, straight chopper. She came through. She came up with the perfect song for Nick, our transgender listener. Drum roll, you ready? Yeah. This is the debut. You know that song we like so much uh, by Aerosmith? Ooh, ooh, dude looks like a lady. Mm -hmm. Shamora's was. uh, uh, Ooh, ooh, dude was once a lady. How perfect is that? No, you you gotta like that. No, it's perfect. It is perfect. Okay. I, I want I want Nick's opinion. I, I just want Nick to write in and and and, and go. New, Nick, give us both your opinions, hers and his. <laughs> ooh, ooh, dude was once a lady. That is perfect. It, it is perfect. Dude was once a lady. Love it. But what if she wasn't a lady? What if she was always like a tomboy? Like just but. She's a lady, but a tomboy. But a lady is like a, a buttoned feminine, up, fem, yeah. but buttoned up and very like right. proper. Right. What if Nick was never proper? 
like just rough. Yeah. But a woman. Yeah. Okay. It still works. But yeah. She, but at that point in Nick's life, mm-hmm. he wasn't a lady. Don't ruin the mood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bob Marleymon. What would you think of the movie? Uh, I loved it. Loved? Scale of 1 to 10. You give it a 10. No, I don't give it a 10. Okay. Um, I don't know why I don't give it a 10. You, well, you said when we left the theater you had an issue. Oh, well, I didn't have an issue. Well, okay. That's exactly what you said. No, I said I had an issue. There was some problems. I said, I said, I said some, but I was wrong on one of them, and you looked it up. We both looked okay. it up. We wanted to look it up because I wasn't sure, and it was my misunderstanding of what uh, Bob Marley said. I thought his original manager uh, died. And here's something I didn't know about. I don't want to take you off track, so remember to tell me what your issue was. I didn't know until they, they said it in the movie with the Chiron. One, I didn't know he was that young when he died. 36. Oh, yeah, yeah, I knew that. And two, I don't know why the fuck for the longest. I thought he was murdered. No, because he was shot. So you uh, people think that he was... I, I, thought he was I always thought he was murdered. I never knew he died of toe cancer. Well, he died of skin cancer. It was, oh, it, it, was, it was in his toe. Oh, okay. It started in his toe. Okay. But he died. It's uh, skin cancer. Um, the, the thing that they stayed away from, and I and this was one of my... I was this the Zionist thing? Yeah, and I was wondering how they were going to deal with it. And this. just remember, I know when it... The time. I know you'll get... You no, 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 I'm not, I'm not. I'm not because I, 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 I have made a point to stay away from this for three months now. Almost four months. Right. I think it is four months. Um, I made a point to stay away from this because uh, I, I I have not tried to get political. I, we have Michael Rappaport out there being as political as possible and doing. He, he reminds me a little bit though, in some of his execution of uh, Morton Downey. What was the guy? Was it Big, big Mouth, Loud Mouth? Yeah, well, that was, was it Morton, Morton Downey or Robert? No, no, it was Morton Downey. Morton Downey. Morton, Morton Downey Jr. Well, I, go ahead. You know, he's just well, he's just you know. I, you know, I'm going to give this to him because uh, I, I already said he's only a good actor, not a great actor. So, I, I mean, I'm not kissing his ass or anything. But what I will say is, uh, you know, he when he started this, he started when online the response was overwhelmingly uh, opposite of what he was saying. Uh, it was. It was very harsh and it was very like uh, people were surprised and he he was full force so i'm not i'm not mad at him for being very aggressive about what he was up to but in this movie so we won't spend a lot of time i'll just say uh you know there there was i, I was i'm very uh I, I was wondering how they were going to deal with the fact that he was a zionist and i don't know what his feelings would be today that's the first thing someone's going to yell but that's not how I don't know what his feelings would be today and how he would approach it because of his spirituality which i think is what this movie is about but um, you love touching this when you talk. Yeah, I do. It just it just it, it grounds me. Okay. Uh, it, 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 so I didn't know, you know, what the response was going to be and how they were going to. And they really didn't touch it. They really they gave do you, you a think few, they should have. Um, it was it was a part of his life. So uh, I didn't know what part of it is. But as I as, as we got to the ending and as I had a chance to reflect on the movie after we walked out of it, because it was something that was towards the end. They did. They touched at the very towards the very end. And in the beginning, when you see uh, the star, David. So um, but what I realized is this wasn't about him. This movie is about him, but it's about the spirituality. It's about the journey of the person. And uh, this movie has very little to do with Bob Marley. And I didn't realize that until the very end. It's all about so, Bob Marley, but okay. it's about the, the journey. spiritual journey that he had. Not about him as the... Him as the man is, is... It doesn't move without him as the man, but the journey was what was this was about. And at, at the end, when, he's, uh, when they're redoing that, uh, um, that interview... And he's leaning back and he's talking and he's just not about me, man. You know, and how he talked about it was as he wasn't the person that he was, was just a, um, a delivery system for what the energy was. That he, he was I was the vessel. Yeah. He was the vessel. So, but, uh, and last thing that bothered me about this movie, and this is all the things that bothered me about the movie. And I say, oh, I shouldn't say bothered me, but that I took note in. Um, they went for a prettier looking Bob Marley. Bob Marley was a little bit more rugged, a little bit more. I thought that dude was perfect. I thought he 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 did a great job and he had great energy. And at the end, I was really starting to buy into it. But right. then when you see the the pictures of Bob, Bob was rugged. Bob was a little okay, bit listen, weathered. Listen, and listen, listen, listen. This is Hollywood stuff. Often, often, 
Hollywood does rough looking niggas a favor. <laughs> <laughs> because Ruben Hurricane Carter, okay, yeah, nothing no, no, like no, Denzel. No, 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 without a the, doubt. The movie, without I, a doubt. The, the movie I was in, uh, uh, Why Do Fools Fall in Love? The Frankie Lyman story. Yeah. Google Frankie Lyman, nigga. <laughs> Lorenz Tate did him a favor. The real Frankie Lyman looked like a grown Gary Coleman. <laughs> okay. And so, you know, Bob Marley, based on what you're saying, this guy. I think he, I thought he was perfect, but he, he did him a favor. The only people that you could go, all right, in terms of good looks, was Ali. Will Smith is a good looking dude. Ali was a good looking dude. But nine times out of 10, you're going to get an upgrade. You get an upgrade. <laughs> if they ever do the, 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 the Yafit Koto story, uh, <laughs> I'll be interested to see who plays him. <laughs> but. You know what I'm saying, though. Yes. He was a little bit more rugged. Yes. But this dude wasn't a pretty boy. No, no, he was, but he was, like, and his beard was nice. Bob's beard was patchy, and his mustache wasn't full. Like, you know, they, right. they, they got, they, they made him a little bit more. Yeah. They, they put a little sexy on him. Not, right, not right, as. Right, right, and, and, and nothing against that either. I just right. took note of these things that stood out to me. But again, he was a great actor in this. I mean, uh, I, and I pulled up his name so I can say who he was. But I, I thought he did a great job because at the end, when he's leaning back, I was like, yeah, it's a better looking Bob, but he's still getting it, man. I'm going to tell you what, what, why I was so. Uh, I, Kingsley Ben Adir. Okay. I, I'm going to tell you why I was so impressed from, by his performance. From beginning to end, any of those moments that were those big climactic back and forth acting moments uh, between him and the person that he's working with. To me, were powerful. That that scene where he's in the studio talking to the guitarist from London, and he goes on that rant about what the music is and the vessel and the energy, and that scene he had with the woman playing his wife, where they get into that little bickering between the accent, the drama, the powerful performance, the the energy. I just believed it. And even in those more subtle moments, like you're talking about in the, end, in the interview, or whenever he's talking about, and, and when you say the journey, part of what was so fascinating to me about Bob Marley was uh, that journey, that spirituality, it was really about the people. Yeah. Everything is about the people. Yeah. And the thing that blows me away is sometimes you go, you know, people who seem to be so entrenched in humanity for others the good of others, the people that suffer, you know, caring about the people. You go, is this really who you are or is this a false hustle? Is this who you are for now or will you let money, fame, and success change you? And I think there's a lot of people who may not be genuinely that or only genuinely that until something else happens. But with Ali and with Marley, 100% who they are. And, and that's a good point. What I really like about that, too, because you already brought up the argument that he had with his wife outside. Right. And when she says, we didn't do, we, this isn't us. We don't do these. With I've the, been with you since you had the same T-shirt. Yeah. The one shirt. One shirt. But he said, I'm here. How else am I going to spread this music? Right. And so there was a purpose behind it. It wasn't just about. Fame uh, and money. And yeah, and enabling his ego to be puffy. It was about spreading what his message was and what he wanted to get out there. Right. And so if he was keenly aware of that, I like that. I really do, I re and I would respect that. And I believe that's what it was because he stayed true to what he was. Because when you say that Rastafar eye, that's what the eye is. And that I never understood that until right. I saw this, what the eye meant. Right. The, and so that was interesting to me. I, I got something that I didn't have. But um, there was a part in the movie and, and and I know that the you know Ziggy Marley comes on at the beginning and said this is you know they tried to get it as close to the to tell the true the true story, um, and I don't want to you know if you know the story you know the story if you don't know the story I would recommend there's a bunch of docs that you can look up which would I explain the political system that was going on in, in Jamaica at the time so that it makes more sense and why his pullback from Jamaica and leaving, it, it would make more sense if you've seen some of the other docs if you don't know the whole story, just to let <clears throat> some people know. Um, but uh, when he says, you know, that he, you know, the, the guy comes in that was his shooter, the one who shot him, 
Right. At the end of the towards at, this is towards the end of the that movie. teared me up a little bit. It, it got me, but I had to question it and a little bit because, you know, are you that good of a person that the person who shot you, the person that you you can't forget that face? Is this in your notes? Yes, it is. Uh, did you? And am I going too far? Do you no, want no, to no, 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 dude. I, I, listen, sometimes I, I get stuck in wanting to go in an order. Yeah. But when the, I feel the conversation, and when the conversation is meaty, and it, then I go with the flow. Well, so jump, just jump. Well, I just was like, you know, can you really be that about the the eye, the everybody, you know, the, to be that forgiving, to be like, I, I don't have any vengeance for he you. He said, me don't carry no vengeance. vengeance. Yeah. When he said that, they, you know, when I'm talking about it right now, you get a little teary. Yeah, because yeah, you're like, yeah. Because, damn, everybody, it would be great if all of us were that good of people. But, you know, in my own head, when I saw that, I was like, that, I couldn't do that. Same thing. I, I was, he, and prior to him seeing the dude, he's in the house where he got shot. He's, like, he's looking at the bullet holes. His wife was shot in the head outside the house. And the only thing they said they, that saved her was her, <laughs> her dreads were so thick. Yeah. So That shit's like a helmet. Right. <laughs> That's exactly what it is, man. But as he's standing in the same kitchen where he got shot looking at the bullet holes, he turns around and sees the dude in the same spot. And I just go, you know, you have to be an X-Men-like human being, like a powerful gene in you to be able to do that. But then that's my question. Is this, as we look back at it, is this the legend that we made this? I'm part of. Do we, but, but is it true? Is it 100%? And that's I, why I'm saying if it all rings true, this ain't false hustle. Because if he was really about the people, the spirituality. Understood the, what his, the guy was under the pressure Exactly. Of. And forgiving. And that is really who he was. Yeah, man, you're a special. But I think some of this might be the legend of. I think we, as time goes on, we make stories that he might have went, you know. So you're saying that you think he, that I was think a that false. I think he might have said, you know, maybe he doesn't have vengeance for that person. But but I have I said, some issues with it is in the idea. Do you think at that political climate, the guy is supposed to go kill Bob Marley, doesn't kill Bob Marley? You think that guy's alive? The gangs are killing each other all over the place. Right. Do you think he's alive still to come and ask for forgiveness? See, that's why I kind of think some we of We don't have no vengeance, but maybe we should get hit by a truck. <laughs> Not driven by me, you see. Now, I have nothing. But I would just... I, that that that's I'm asking in myself, and maybe I'm asking it because I don't have that same heart. I yeah, may, I, I ask myself in that moment or in any moment, could you be that forgiving? And, and, and you know, with what I understand, probably not for me. Yeah, I'm not. But if he's if he's that person and that much time, and then where he saw people were. Now, the reason I really said that you should know more about what's happened in Jamaica at the time, if you don't know, I know there's plenty of people that know, and I'm not talking to you, but if you understand the political situation at that time, and that, that was a hard moment, I don't know how much you know about it, but when you see the two white dudes that were running, uh, that won, running to run Jamaica, and then he puts their hands together as like a symbol of, uh, but this is, th th there's so much horrible that's between these two guys and who they really are, and that they're not good for the country. So uh, that was hard. That was a hard uh, little part, and that was not uh, acted out. That was uh, they played. They played the real clips from it, and you see that, and you just go, "But damn, these guys are horrible people." Right. So um, I want to go back a second and ask you a question because I know you're a Bob Marley fan and a reggae fan. I, I, I like it. I'm not like the hugest fan, but I I, I okay. like it. Um, is Bob Marley? The Michael Jordan of reggae. See, this is where I, I don't have enough because when when we talked about this a little bit, I would say worldwide, yes, worldwide, he's the one that's known. How but, about Jamaica itself? But in Jim, Jamaica, I know that Jimmy Cliff was a huge deal, and they bring up Jimmy Cliff one time in this movie, like they're, they're going to play together, and he just kind of smiles, um, which was nice because that would be a lack of ego again. Uh, but he did smile in a way that was like okay. But Jimmy Cliff, I, I believe, I, I know played with him at one time. I don't know if he was one of the 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 Whalers uh, right. when it was just the Whalers. Um, but Jimmy Cliff was, you know, also a, a, a great musician. He has great, you know, he has albums out there. That, I don't know what kind of musician he is. I shouldn't say that. His albums are good that I've heard. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, so I don't know. I, I really don't know. I, I really don't know. Is like if when you get to the heart of it, um, but worldwide. Peace, love, 
the whole thing that is projected? Yeah, you have to give it to Bob Marley. Here's why I say yes. Because when you're not a particular fan of something and you don't know a lot about it, if anything, but you've heard of this one person, yeah, that means something. Like if you – and I, I remember back, you know, shit, again, before I was a basketball fan, I didn't know much about Bird and Magic except their names. And I really wasn't into basketball. Jordan was the guy that got me into the game. And sometimes, like, if, even if you're not a fan of golf, but you know who Tiger Woods is, you're not a fan of, you know, such and such. But anytime you're not a fan of something, but you go, I know who that guy is, that's a, there's a reason for that. Who's your favorite bowler? <laughs> yeah, I'm lost on that. <laughs> I'm lost on that. I don't know. I know there's this one guy who does this thing like that. That's yeah, all I know. Uh, yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, I say Bob Marley because, again, I, I, and, I, and listen, man, I, 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 I've asked myself why I never got into reggae. I don't know why I just, it, you know, I hear certain parts of it and I go, okay. But then certain, and this is why I might be able to catch some flack. Certain parts of it just sound the same to me. Well, it's just got a feel that you go, that's Jamaican. I, what I really like about what a part of this movie, what I really liked about it is they showed you him trying to make new up new music. Like, like you just said, it all sounds the same. When he said in the studio, something, something, he did the thing four times. Yeah. We need a new sound. And so he said, you, you hear that and then you start paying. I think that that is to get people to tune in and pay more attention to it. And you hear the music and some of the people that they brought in for a different sound. And I think when most people, especially here in the States, I'm going to go with the States because that's what I understand. That's where I'm from here in the U.S. Um, people think of it as just the the drum, the tin, the the, the tin, That's the, what I mean. The that sound. Tin drum, the, 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 but that's not all. That's that. There's so much more to it than that. But if you paid attention to it and you paid attention to Bob a little bit and you understand dance hall music, which is part of the reggae sound, is is is, is some of the some of the beginnings, the, the roots of hip hop. OK, so uh, that's why I wouldn't Jamaican say, you know, that they they help they help. But I can't do it to make it. Listen, I'm not going to argue it, whether it's uh, and even in the, the, the doc, we're going to talk about about Quincy. Yeah. Quincy Jones. There's a moment where he's talking to Kendrick Lamar, and he goes, "Before it was hip hop, it was bebop." Yeah. And where where did where did rap come from? And Kendrick Lamar says, "Like most people, it was born out of the Bronx." And Quincy goes, "No, Africa." Yeah. So so whether the roots are in Africa, the Bronx, or Jamaica. It's all black roots, well, it, and that's good enough for me. And it's 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 a hybrid. So of course, when you have a hybrid, it's going to come from different places. That's that's part of it. That's part <clears> of the uniqueness of it. Um, so I and I'm only saying that because sometimes when we've had conversations about this, I like to give you know all the little places it's due, and I think that you know that gets passed over sometimes. Uh, it, it, that island sound, that that sound, and then the 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 way that the way that Bob. Marley delivered some of the, his his words were more rhyme esque and yeah. and wordy, you know, yeah. like it's telling the story, which is what what you know hip hop ended up doing, when, especially in the beginning, it was telling right. the story. So uh, that that that's the only reason I even brought that up. Uh, but this, uh, by the way, too, Aries just brought up uh, the Quincy Jones. Uh, what was there a name? To it? it was Quincy. Quincy. Yeah, it Quincy. was. Man, and I, mean, I called Aries when I saw this. Yeah, and and we're gonna be talking about this next week. So I want people to see this before we talk about this thing because Netflix. We, it's called Quincy because he's he he was he delivers this right. You know, and that's kind of makes it more powerful. Check this out because I always I, I admired him for the things that he did, but I didn't know everything that he did, and it's 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 and a, he did everything for everything for everyone. Um. <laughs> So the dude playing Bob Marley, you know he's British. Yeah, and he has a thick British accent. Yeah, he was. He's been one of his uh, credits is Pinky Blinders. He's in the that the Pinky Blinders that you don't want to see. Oh, is he? Yeah. Um, my first question is, one, how do you feel about a Brit playing a Jamaican? And before you answer, let me say this though: when I say he's got a thick British accent, it's thick. Uh, I'm surprised his teeth aren't jacked up. Uh, Cause you know with them accents, that that's how they fuck up their teeth. The Brits, they put on certain words, and the words just bash through their teeth. Um, dude, between knowing that, how well he nails this Jamaican accent and the performance, this 
the beast, man. Yeah, but and I guess it's true to Bob Marley. That accent's thick. I mean, if you're gonna, as an actor, let me ask you this: yeah. Would you rather have an accent that is kind of lighter? Because that's going to be a little bit harder to hit other than right notes. Or would you rather that thick, heavy accent so that you can go a little over the top and then and then bring it back? Whatever, bring it is, back. whatever is accurate to what it should be. Well, I think that I, I just thought maybe that would be a little bit easier because it's someone that had it. But I'm going to say this, too. If you are not someone who's who talks to Jamaicans on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Go see something <laughs> Jamaican before you go to this movie. Get a translator. Said, no, but go see something for get into the rhythm of this because I swear the first like three, four minutes. Three, four minutes, you'd be a nice. The whole movie. Yeah, but I, there was a minute where I was like, I didn't understand anything he said. The, yeah. the first the first three to five <laughs> right. minutes, I don't think I understood half of what was being right, said. Right. No, there's some moments in there where you go, God damn. <laughs> but, that shit is is it, but you know, and and to that. But let me let you answer the question as uh, far as a guy, a British guy playing. I, I don't, you know, at this point, I live here in, in America and right. British guys have been playing American guys for forever. I, I think it's kind of it, it's it's funny in a way because, you know, I, it's funny in this way. I have friends that say, what the f- man, we can't find a, right. a, an American actor to play an American character. We got to go to well, now we even went a little deeper. Now right. we can't find the Jamaican to play a Jamaican character. We went, we went. To, so apparently, in the black community in in Britain, there must be this amazing wealth of unbelievable actors that we have never ever seen before. Right, so right. that that's that that's how I would answer that. I don't have a problem with it. Right. Um, I I seen non Jewish people play Jews before, so right. you know it is what it is. Yeah, if you non-Jews playing a Jew, I got to do the beak test. <laughs> this is a big nose. <laughs> is Adrian Brody Jewish? I don't, I don't even know. I never even thought about it. I, I would imagine. I, ma- I imagine he is. The Jew beak know. on that nigga. Should we ask? Should we ask? Should we ask the Google? No, let's just keep going because I want to. I gotta. I gotta step away for just a second. Here, go ahead and ask your next. I'll yeah. be back in ten seconds. Oh, what you got? Blow your nose. I was going to tell you, man, in the theater, because there was one point where it felt like it felt like for 15 minutes you kept uh, coughing and wheezing. And I was going to say, nigga, cough hard one time and get that shit out your chest. It wasn't that. Uh, I swallowed wrong. Is that what it was? Yeah, and I, it was in my... I, I, I feel like a three-year-old when I'm, when I'm... What I'm about to say. It went down <laughs> the wrong pipe. I, I was sitting there and I, I had some water. Do you cough like that if it goes in the wrong pipe? If it goes in the wrong pipe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, man. Oh, you, oh, you were being funny. Yeah, being cute. Uh, Big dick busting. Yeah, no, it was. Uh, it it was. Uh, it, that that's all it was. I, I and I I didn't want to like have this like huge coughing fit, but I should have because it would have been easier. Um. <clears throat> uh. Okay, let me say this since we're on the accent thing. Uh, dude, it is so easy to see why white women are so drawn to black men. We come in so many different flavors and styles with various types of energy and swag. Accents have such a sexy rhythm because it's like music. And it when it when it flows off the tongue right, it, it, it tickles the eardrum so nice. I, and I, again, I've said I do a Jamaican accent. I do the typical... Someone that can't do a Jamaican accent, trying to do a Jamaican accent, overdoing the Jamaican accent. Um, But again, like when he was in that studio and it was just a couple of moments where when he was in a rant with that Jamaican flow, I was like, yeah, to a white woman who culturally only knows what white is, which is to say (laughs) bland and not a lot of choices. Like, I, I used to say white boy's flavor is either straight bland or maybe kind of surf dude, like a California dude. So that's its own swag. But for the most part, it's really one note. Whereas with black people, you got to do English acts that come from England with a British accent. You got Jamaicans. You got American street with street hustle and flow and flavor. And I would imagine that when you're a white woman and you don't know nothing but what your world is, when you hear that, 
you see the dreads, man, and that way the flu off the tongue, and you know, and the style and the. I go, yeah, it's easy to see why a white woman's panties drop over black men. But you know, white men go to other countries and they love American accents. White men go to other, other countries and their accent isn't bland because they're not used to getting that there. It's it, because it, it is the that want to secretly be brought here and no, live no, here. No, no, That's no. their citizenship No, it's ticket. because what you know, you hear white dudes talking here, and then when you hear a, a white dude speak with... And a, in a regular American accent. Yeah, then you, you just... That's what you hear. That is your typical white bread sandwich. But when you go somewhere else... And they only have ciabatta bread, and the people are speaking with that white bread, and there you go. The, the people are like, oh, that's very nice. So what we would see as exotic bread being ciabatta to a ciabatta, that's nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's but a- white bread is a delicacy to them, whereas to us, Wonder Bread, white bread, is just Wonder Bread, white bread. Yeah. You broke that down with yeast. <laughs> yeast brought us an understanding. <laughs> That was awesome, dude. If you hadn't put that in a yeast yule context, <laughs> I would have never got that. That sounds like some from Dewan Curse. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> it is time to feast. Bring on the yeast. No, but you you do it all Today's the time. Today's yeast yule feast. <laughs> no, go ahead. But you do it all the time because you like when I when you bring up mayonnaise, you put that on a white plate. You say that white folks mayonnaise mayonnaise. Right. When you go uh, and you you have some aioli, that's a garlic aioli. Have you had this? Have you had this? So it's a mayonnaise based with garlic added to it. But it, aioli makes it fancy. Yeah, but it's still the same. From now on, when you want to explain things to me, you do food, food, food? Do yeah, foods. Okay. You can't hear it, but Louis is going. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's a question I, I had, and again, I thought that he was murdered, but now that I know he wasn't, but he was still shot at. So here's was my question in the movie. Uh. Where was it? God damn it. Oh, come on. Don't do this. <laughs> I, 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 okay, I remember it uh, off the dome. What was it? What was so impactful about who he was as a musician that made people want to take him out as a musician? He's a musician. It, the he's story, not a political leader. The stories he's telling about really? the people. Yeah, because the people, when you get, listen, when you give strength to the people, and I love when he talks about all governments are illegal. Right. So when you say something like that, just imagine saying that. When you say all governments are illegal, all governments, who'd you piss off? The government. All the governments. You don't piss off just a government. You piss off all the governments. But what are they thinking by him singing about politics and the government? What's that going to do? Because once people get out of their take off their blinders and realize the strength is in the people. Then they become a threat to the government. Yeah. yeah. Governments are only overthrown by the people. Ah. And or, no, I shouldn't say that. Sometimes they're overthrown by another military leader who has control of the military. But governments are usually overthrown by the people. Mm. So that, 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 that's what he's singing about in, in, in a place like Jamaica, if you could have brought the people together, the two, you know, and that's what some of this is about, the two gangs that were running Jamaica. Um, if, if the people can come together, what, what chances a, a, a government that's made up of leaders that don't really care about the people? What chance do they have to survive if the people get together? God, that's, you know, I'm telling you, that's because off the top of my dome, I just go, dude, at the end of the day, it's just music. But that's what's so amazing about art. It's not just that. It, it, it really can move people. Words, whether it's poetry, spoken word, comedy, music, words, man, the words, man. It, it, that, that can touch a, 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 a thing in you to, you know, motivate you to do shit. Dude, photography, painting, everything, everything that can touch the soul, man. Because when it comes down to it, and this is why it's hard for me to watch this sometimes with my thought process, you know, and, 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 and experience something that, that, that I, we don't say them, they, they, because that's divisive. I, when we're all part of the I. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but it's the truth. Right. When we all work for each other, then what needs to be accomplished? Right. If we actually all cared about each other. Uh, there's a moment in here. Uh, 
where he says, uh, well, no, his wife says, the most high always protect, the most high always protects his anointed ones. And then I immediately went, okay, but yet Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, and again, I thought Bob Marley was killed, but he wasn't, but he was attempt, attempted to kill him. But let's just say, even if he was killed, it still doesn't change my point about Martin and Malcolm. So if the, all, the, if the most high, God, always protects the anointed ones, Malcolm and Martin, but yet they were killed, how is that protection? But then, within the same breath, uh, a sec later she says, but at the same time, the messenger must become the message. So I'm going, so does that mean that they have to die for the greater good of the message? And it reminds me of that one line in the song, which the only Bob Marley song I have in my uh, music player is a redemption song. And he says, and he sings this, and I love that they had him sing this in the movie, and his kids all came around the fire, which I thought was kind of powerful. And this, the lyric goes, how long will they kill our prophets while we stand aside and look? Some say that's just a part of it. We've got to fulfill the books. So is that the same message? Like, how long are they going to kill our leaders while we do nothing? But that's a part of it because it needs to happen for the message. Their death is the message for the greater good. Is that what that is? Yeah, in some in some aspects, in some aspects, I believe that when you serve the purpose, and it has to be passed on, or it has to be whatever happens next, you get called up. You don't have to do it anymore, because well, first of all, when you talk about the redemption song, there's a, there's one scene that I'm sure is is written. I'm sure it's it's I'm I'm, I'm I'm not trying to say that it's corny. It's not corny, but it's the truth. But sometimes it seems like just good writing. But when uh, he plays his redemption song, Around the Fire, right. and then his wife goes, how long have you been working on that one? And he goes, my whole life. That was the part that got me. Really? Yeah, because I, when, you, when you think about it, this is we, we fight and we argue and, and we, we speak about struggle but how do you go through life without struggle how does life work without the struggle well you can't struggle is the life and sh and with the struggle makes you appreciate the success struggle is life and so when he said you know redemption song I'll, and i've been working on it my whole life uh i, I don't want to sound like like just to make it too easy but uh, the 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 idea of a life without struggle is is fat, it's gross. There's nothing to accomplish. There's nothing to do. There's what what, what would be the struggle? Sign me up for life without struggle because it, I've been signed up for struggle for way too fucking long. I I think struggle is necessary. We don't know everybody's struggle. We always assume that when we look out, we see we know what our struggle is, so we just assume that you know. Uh, However it is that that's the struggle. And unless you put it like on kids and you go to a, a hospital and see some kids that are born and very young age have cancer, then you, that's the only people you give you the struggle to. Like you'll go, oh, that's probably worse than what I've gone through. Right. But in, and other than that, most people are, are so focused on their struggle. And again, this I idea, like it's not like a new idea. I've heard this things like this before. But if you... No matter where you are in your struggle, if you have enough time to look up and pay attention to others, doesn't that change everything? You know, this is why, again, I, I, and I hate, I'm so sorry to the people that listen to the podcast. I know, I know, I know, I know I get repetitive on certain things, but I have to because this is part of my journey. This is why I go back and forth with this God thing because I'm going as, as, as contradictory as that sounds to me. That God protects the the, the, all, the all most high protects protects the anointed ones, but they didn't get protected. They got killed. So where was the protection? But if their death is the message for the greater good, in some sick weird way, that makes sense to me. I think it's f f foul, but it make that makes sense to me. Well, the other side of this, and I and I'm not trying to minimize a death. But we all die. Yeah, we do. But, but 
but but if you died, Who wants to be shot in the face. Okay, let me ask you this: you you reach great success, great success, uh, mansions, boats, parties. Yes, you know, uh, white women. People look up to you. Yes. You 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 sit on a throne that's higher than most, and you die, and that's what you leave behind. That legacy. You think that that's higher than someone who died young, might have died younger. Their life was taken from them, but they they left the message. Kind of hard to read the message when you're sitting on the throne that high. Well, Minion, that's... bring me the paper. What's the <laughs> message say? That's why I think the people on the throne over the people on, uh, on the ground. Uh, dude, after seeing this movie, remember last week when we said if we could give our private parts names. Uh, I finally, based on this movie, I was inspired. I know when I'm going to call my dick now. What's that? When I get with a girl and I whip it out, I'm going to go, meet young lion. <laughs> I like young lion. Yeah, you're going to say it like that too, right? You, I meet young lion. And if it could talk, it would go. Rrr. You should have that, uh, that MGM lion queued up for oh, to say it. Steve. <laughs> All right, Steve. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to count this in, and I'm going to say again, uh, you know, Andy, you're right. You should, I should have a lion roar. When I unzip my pants and pull it out, I'm going to say, meet young lion, and then give me the MGM roar, Steve. Uh, counting this in in three, two, one. Andy, you're right. The lion roar would per be perfect. So I would meet a chick, I would unzip my pants, and when I pull my out, I go, meet young lion. <laughs> uh... Yeah, man, it's a powerful shit. Dude, um, that's some powerful dreads. And the, dude, and the reason why I said that, because there's a scene in the movie where uh, Bob is talking to who feels like, I don't know, the right, how do I articulate this? Almost like in Black Panther, his father, T'Challa's father, for King T'Challa. Yeah. There's this older, wiser Rastafarian whose dreads are so long, this nigga wraps it around his neck like a scarf. Um, that's some powerful dreads, man. Do you think though that was were real dreads? Yes, those were real dreads. Oh, yeah, that looked real. I think everybody in that movie was real. Well, his dreads changed drastically throughout the. Well, no, Bob but Bartley's. That, well, Bob's, but that's the wig, man. You yeah, know. yeah. Uh, but I think everybody else was authentic. Do you like dreads? Would you ever have? Would is no. there a time that you ever no. tried dreads? It wanted looks, dreads? It looks dirty. You really think it so? It looks filthy. Really? Yes. Do people even wash those? Yeah, you wash them, but differently. What's a, what's a different wash? Well, first, yeah. Did, we wash them with red stripe. <laughs> the chemicals in the beer can clean the dreads, man. Uh, yeah. I, I think dreads are cool. Why do Jamaicans replace my with me? There's a scene, and they call Bob Marley in the skip. There's a, ski, a scene where they're leaving the London concert, and he goes, skip, uh, let me catch my breath. It's not my, it's me. Let me catch my breath. J to any Jamaicans, if you listen to this, I'm putting the uh, bumba clot in the air. Uh, why do y'all replace my with me? That's an island kind of thing, though. Is that it? really? Yeah, because I can think I've heard it in other places. Really? You still coughing? Yeah, is it man, still in the okay, wrong yeah. pipe? Seriously, once I do that, yes, I, 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 it'll, it'll, I'll cough for hours. Little, Jesus it'll be little, Christ, little ones. Mm, mm, mm. My lungs aren't the best, and it doesn't like any uh, moisture down there like that. You know, because I'm not that person, and I don't understand the philosophy behind it. I was thinking to myself, even before they show the scene where he gets shot, uh, they have the meeting of, as to whether or not he should even do the concert. And uh, somebody said something about, um, you know, m your life is being threatened. And I'm going, if you notice, why no protection? Why no armed guards? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and again, it, he's such about that the spiritual and the people, it's almost like 
Do you believe you're going to be protected? Why are you not worried? I, I think he... Because he believed in people, and that's why when he no I, no because that's why when he said I'm le- we're after he got done he left Jamaica, and he was mad at Jamaica. But he also said to the dude with the dreads, who's like I said, the scarf, the yeah. older older dude. He goes, uh, "Me not take me on people who tried to kill me." Yeah, and I thought to myself, nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, it's usually always your own people. Yeah. So why not? But they're not really your own people if they're going to kill you. I know what you mean. They're not your people, but yeah. he, by association, pigmentation association, they're your people. Yeah, but, yeah, they ain't your people, but they're your people. I, I, I See, I have a hard time with that, and I know that you feel that way, and you've said it. I feel that way, but I'm not 100%. That's not 100% concrete with me because I know how foul... My people can be. Everybody's people. Okay. Everybody wants something. That's the problem. Everybody wants, or, you know what? I don't even know if I should use want. Everybody needs something. And then when your need becomes more important than the other person's, right. that's when you take something. And that's what I see in, in life. It, it, it's not about necessarily want. It's when you believe that you need it and you deserve it more. Right. And... And you don't believe in the other person. You don't. Do you think so? Okay. Um, God, I don't want to. I don't want to go. I don't think I know how to do this. Any time that someone's been killed by, like you said, your own people, they didn't believe in that person, or they probably couldn't kill them. They didn't believe it, so they're not their people because they didn't believe in them, or they couldn't do it. Yeah. I mean, I, what you're saying makes sense, but I know what I'm saying makes sense too. Yeah, no, I know, I, I know what you're saying, but it, it, it's, it's. You think that if there's a, an entity that's against you, that the entity that that entity has struggled and they should be together so they could fight the other entity. Yes, that doesn't work that way. I know, and that's why I don't believe in the people. <laughs> but he did believe in the people because everything he did. It was for the people. You know, it's such a noble idea, and there's a part of me that wishes I could be that 100%. I know at times I am that, but not 100%. I, I, I think that we... I think that you have to have a, an ability to at least see the other people. Because uh, when you when you say that, like the, uh, the oppressed and the oppressor, the... When, and no one sees themselves as the oppressor. No one sees themselves as that. They, 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 somehow, they have a right in their head for what they're doing. They can't do it without it. And so I'm not saying that they're right. I'm saying if you can't see why they do that, if you can't get in their head, the fight goes on forever. you got to, you, you got to see why they're, what, what, what they're up to. That's how you defeat them anyway, to see why, what they're up to. It took me a second uh, to realize, and it, it, believe me, I was like, it was killing me. I had to know. But the one record exec, I'm like, that face, yeah. that chubby face. And I couldn't place it because only, I'd only seen him in one thing. And then it f- hit me, and that's when I leaned over and go, that's James Gandolfini's and as soon son. And as soon as you said that's J- and it, it, it's that, that quick because it's, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was killing me. Uh, but the part, the, the hair part in yeah, the glasses. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and at that moment, and, you know, we, we, you mentioned uh, Exodus, and they said one of the biggest selling albums. Uh, Considered one of the greatest one albums. One of the greatest albums of the 20th century. Uh, and, again, to Bob Marley's, uh, <laughs> his, his, who he was as a person. Uh, the first time the guy showed him the artwork for the album, he didn't like it. It was too busy. It looked like Jimi Hendrix Experience is what it looked like. Oh, did it? Yeah. Uh, this one was w- much more simple. Um, simple. It was just words. It was just a right, word. Yeah, Exodus, <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, I just kept waiting for his son at that point to go, we need you on the f***ing album cover. Don't get me wrong. It's pretty f- good. But we got this whole fucking record here. All right. I just and I did like how James. he said it, though. Dude. I did like how he said it to him, though. Right. Because, Bob, there's not, you don't even have your picture on it. Right. And he's like, well, you know, it's not about me being, uh, you know, his ego. Right. And he goes... Yeah, but we're trying to sell records here. Like uh, it's it, not about me ego, it's about the people. Yeah, but we're trying to sell fucking records. 
fuck that. We got to sell the fucking wreckage. Otherwise, Hesh won't get the fucking money. It, 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 I like that they put a little bit of the business in there. Not a lot. They didn't. You right. know what I, also they did? They didn't get. This is why I did like this movie so much. And, and you know, as I'm thinking about it, and we really just saw this. Like, this isn't even. Go- I still got popcorn in my yeah. teeth. Um, as you ingest this movie, yes. you realize they didn't get stuck anywhere. They didn't get on anything. As a matter of fact, all the weaknesses that, you know, usually a movie gets stuck on the drama of extramarital affairs. That is that fast in this movie. Right. Uh, The record execs drama that fast in the movie. Right. The part, even when the the when they're going to do the sun, the sunshine concert. And there's only one white guy there. All the black dudes, all the Rasta dudes, and they're all sitting there. And then he goes, the one white dude goes, you're, he goes, I got to be, basically, I got to be careful. They have machine guns or whatever. And he goes, and the white dude goes, Bob, your guitar is your machine gun. Right. And it was that. The, the moment, and, you know, he he has a thing that he says to defend I, himself. I, no, no, I love after the white guy said that. The one, Ross Safran goes, boom, a clot, the white boy. Because that felt like some white boy shit to say. Right. You, it, you, 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 your it, guitar is your machine gun. It was. It was right. very, it was very right. like we're going into battle. Let's right. charge. Right, right. Uh, and then he says, you know, but if you don't go, you let them win. Uh, which was, but, but. He, they defended that a little bit, but you you got enough of it to go. And he he says, I can't. It's easy for me to say this. He does say that. Right. But that is like this fast in the movie. Right. They didn't get they didn't get stuck anywhere on the political uh, the political uh, heat of that time. Right. They, 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 it is all in the background. They didn't get stuck on race. They didn't get stuck on extramarital affairs. They we didn't got to get, keep it moving, man. They had to keep it moving. That's what's so good about this. Right. Uh, but. What I really liked about it is after you see this, what, what you don't know, you're going to want to go find out because it doesn't give you the answers. It gives you the journey. You know, big shout out to black women because it seems like a, a, it's amazing a, a woman's instincts. And I say black women because in terms of the movies, this is I'm going from what I've seen. Whether it was Betty Shabazz telling Malcolm X about the possible betrayal of Brother Baines or... Bob Marley's wife telling him about the promoter who was stealing. Women seem to always have an instinct to smell the. The promoter didn't say he was stealing. He was getting little kickbacks, uh, and uh, he took six bullets for him, man. Mm-hmm. That was the yeah. th- that was the the justification. I, this is a good movie. Uh, I don't know why. I would really like to be able to sit here and go. You know what I really liked about this? I didn't like. There's nothing I can say I liked about this movie except the movie. Does it go up there with some of the greatest biopics ever made? And when and here's when I off the top of my dome when I go, if you ask me what's the greatest biopic ever made, number one hands down Ray Charles. Oh, now I got to throw in there what's love got to do with it, Tina Turner. After that, eh, everything is a toss up. Is it up there with with those? And you think about Ali, uh, the Whitney Houston biopic, the James Brown biopic, the George Foreman biopic. Where does this rank? Uh, Malcolm X biopic. It's just different to me. It's different. It doesn't. Is Is it it higher than any of those I just named? No, because I don't feel like I saw a biopic. You saw a journey. I did. I know it sounds corny, but I right. did. There's nothing in there that I went away. You got that he was he died of cancer. That's what you got out of the movie. The rest well, of I got stuff, more than that. Yeah, but, but I mean, yeah, that's that's the information. A biopic tries to give you details about right. their life. His life. We know that his. We know his dad was white. I didn't know that. You didn't know that before. Mm-hmm. His dad was white. I knew that going into this. His dad's white. He's uh, he's part of the uh, uh, occupy the, uh, the the colonists. He's part right. of the, col- the colonists. Um, he is. Uh, I, I didn't. Uh, the part I did get, I didn't know that he. And and I believe this to be at least said. I don't think that they would put this in that the dad didn't want him, and that's that was important. Well, that's welcome to <laughs> part of black life. So that that was that's important, but um, 
that okay, so it didn't get stuck on his childhood. It didn't get stuck on just his dad. Again, they gave you flashbacks of his childhood. Just little so, pops. And it was great. It was the pops mixed I mean, in to, with to, to what make was it really work. going on. Yeah. But I don't feel like I watched a biopic. I felt like I watched the story of a, a, a loose story of a, of a man that's important. That's the only way I could say go it. Go see it, folks. I know we press for time. Uh, go see it. You want to give out some dates? Yeah. And as you're getting out the dates, let me just say, this movie was so Jamaican-inspiring. Do you know what I'm going to do when I get out the shower today? Uh, you're going to get some cool breeze. I'm going to put me... Steve, cue the music. No. I'm going to put my leg up on the air conditioner <laughs> and let the cool breeze shoot all of me anus around me nutsack, sack and then going to make myself feel like I'm drenched in a river of red stripe. <laughs> like I'm just swimming doing the back petal in nothing but red stripe, cool breeze, the beer. That's what I'm going to do, man. You got the dates? I got them. Give me the dates. And as Andy gives the dates, Steve, keep the Jamaican music flowing. March 9th, we're going to be at the Holland Civic Center in Holland, Michigan. Uh, March 15th through the 16th, we're going to be at the Cincinnati Funny Bone in Liberty Township. Yeah, man. March 22nd through the 23rd, we're going to be at the Funny Bone in Virginia Beach. The bomb, the clat. Yeah, I, I, I'd like, could you say Funny Bone again? Funny Bone. <laughs> March 29th to the 31st, we're going to be at the Funny Bone in Columbus, Ohio. Who did it, the white boy Hatcha? Uh, April 5th, we're going to be at the Parker uh, Theater Show at Fort Lauderdale, one night only. All in the mercy! Uh, April 11th, we're going to be at uh, River Cree. This is our can Canadian tour that's in Alberta. Uh, April 12th, we're going to be at Gray Eagle in uh, Calgary. April 13th to the 14th, we're back at Funny Bone in Syracuse this Don't time. Don't just light it, pass it. April 15th, we're going to be at Darthworth Music in Toronto. Uh, April 19th to the 21st, we're at Improv in Cleveland, Ohio. Who want to test me? Oh. Here is the need in a team. There we go. That's what I was hoping for. <laughs> uh, April uh, 27th, we're going to be at Bronson Center in Ottawa. April 28th, we're going to be at the Olympia in Montreal. Uh, April 30th, we're at Bella Rose in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Smell the jerk chicken. May 2nd through the 5th, we're going to be at Helium in Portland, Oregon. What going on? What going on? What going on? May 9th, we're going to be at the Meyer Theater in Green Bay, Wisconsin. May 11th, we're at the Wilbur in Boston. Yeah, I'm going to put my dick on the table. My dick name, Young Lion. May 18th, we're at MSG at the Hulu Theater. And Madison Square Garden. That's the dates, man. That's it, man. Steve, let the music play and play and play. <laughs> <laughs> doing this for the people. All right. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, I forgot. You need to like and subscribe. How about that? Yeah, and if you want to write into the podcast, Ari Spears 45 at Hotmail, man. Not the man part, but Hotmail. A hot mailman. That could be a, that could be a new website for Hotmail. Girl, hot I saw you looking at the guy the other day. Why were you looking at him? <laughs> because it's a hot mail, man. He bring you your mail and make you wait. Spears and Steinberg. Thanks for listening to the Spears and Steinberg podcast. If you'd like to know who's responsible for this shit, it was hosted by Ari Spears and Andy Steinberg, produced by Steve Merrick and Anthony Holmes, executive producer, Big Papa, Robert Kelly, and Matt Pine Schmidt for the Laugh Button Podcast. For more information on where to find us on the internet, visit SpearsbergPod.com.